And I'll just bring you another positive story this afternoon. South African cardiologist Dr. Kavashri Govender and Dr. Nahi Levine have pulled off an incredible feat in the treatment of heart conditions. The duo pioneered the implant of a biotronic Envia Sky Pacemaker device at Johannesburg's Netcare Mill Park Hospital. This is the first implant of the latest pacemaker device on the African continent. So what did it take to get it is done on African soil for the first time? What is the significance of all of this? Dr. Nahi Levin joins me now live in studio. Doc, good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming in and congratulations, I guess, are in order for this work that you and your colleagues have done. Thank you. Wonderful to join you and thank you for uh, the opportunity to celebrate this. Yeah, I hope I didn't get the pronunciation wrong. Biotronic Envia Sky. Correct. Is that correct? What is this? What is this device? It is a pacemaker which is used in any number of electrical abnormalities that can occur in the heart. Um, but it has a unique, some unique features involved with it that allow for it to take into account the latest technological algorithms and is very focused on ensuring that workflow and patient management and the patient's ability to obtain the correct care they need as soon as they can is available to the patient. Okay, I saw a headline in another media organization saying it's revolutionary. Does, does that capture it? Is it uh, high tech? Is that advanced? So it has some very unique algorithms which, uh, which are involved in it. It also has some unique features in that it doesn't require being switched, programmed or in certain ways to be able to go into an MRI um, scanner, which most pacemakers do. And when we get to issues such as stroke, where time counts and where we need to, especially at a, a stroke facility such as our hospital, where we need to get patients from door to opening that vessel in the brain the same way as we do with the heart with coronary interventions. Not having to wait for somebody to come and switch off a pacemaker saves huge amounts of time and improves outcomes. Um, and across okay. the board, it allows patients to, op to have the best opportunities and care. Okay, tell us about this operation, this, this particular one. I mean, you don't have to give us too much details about the patient. There must have been a patient, but I understand it was a very young patient. Normally, this kind of pacemakers, well, from what we know, is for older people. Certainly. So most, I'll take the second part first, most pacemakers are put into older patients either because they have an issue with generating the electrical impulse that then spreads throughout the heart. So at the top part of the heart, they cannot generate the impulse at the correct time or in the correct amplitude. And other times, you may get generation at the top part of the heart, but it can't cross into the bottom part of the heart. And so therefore, there's a disconnect between the top and the bottom. That's kind of, we see in older um, generation of patients, although it is possible to have to be born with that in some patients. This particular case was a less common occurrence in that it's called, we know people sometimes pass out and they say they fainted. Now most of the time fainting is not due to this particular condition called cardio inhibitory vasovagal syncope. It's a medical word, so it's got to be long, right? So it's, um, in this particular case, what happens is Normally, when the, when, when the blood pressure drops, the heart rate increases in order to be able to compensate for the drop in blood pressure. But in this particular condition, there's an overwhelming drive to slow everything down in the body. And so the heart rate drops in addition to the blood pressure, and the patient passes out. So what this device is able to do is to preempt, as can some other devices, but particular algorithms within this device and the updated version of this, preempt when that's going to occur and act in advance of that happening to stop the symptoms and 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 the action and the heart activity. continues to pump normally it continues there's no to fainting pump. there's nothing yep okay how long did it take you and your team to do this i understand you worked along dr kavashri govinda and you had other team because you when you do these kind of things you're never alone absolutely yeah. it's a team effort yes. with everything we do from the people who design it to the people who bring it in to the to the to our to our team in the cath lab etc so this particular um because this patient was so young one of the key features within this uh device is that it is the first device licensed to go into a particular part of the of the electrical conducting system in the heart the left bundle branch if you like and that kind of is the heart's natural wiring that goes around the heart 
and um, be able to send its impulses throughout the heart from that. So you're kind of keying into the heart's natural um, area. And one, so one of the key features of this is it's the first device to be licensed for that. And Dr. Govinder, being an electrophysiologist, was able to put this device into exactly that position mm -hmm. to allow for optimal electrical movement throughout the heart and thus being able to preserve as much of the natural physiology, if you like, of the heart as possible. How long did it take? This well, it operation? takes around 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's the first time this particular device, uh, the Biotronic Envia Sky device, was used on, on our continent and it's been successful. It's been successful. It was first used um, in its initial, when it first came out, it was in, it was in August, if I, I stand to be corrected, but it was in August in, in, um, overseas in Europe. And it came in the evening before and we had it accessible to patients in, in Africa and South Africa the following morning. And it's available both in the public sector and the private sector, which is really important. A new era, would you say it's a new era in the treatment of heart conditions uh, in our country at least and the rest of the continent maybe? So I would certainly say that there, as we move into more understanding of technology and what can be done, we can, it optimizes our ability to treat these conditions in the most natural, normal way. Yeah. Um, maintaining the heart's best function and normal function. Yeah. I mean, besides describing it as a pioneering surgery, what, what other significance do you as the medical professionals, as a cardiologist and your colleagues, would ascribe to this, uh, this, this revolutionary device? For me, I was filled with gratitude that we were able to offer here in South Africa the latest technology in the world in this particular area to patients here and we don't lag behind when it comes to technologies such as this, when they are available and they're going to improve the quality of life and our patients' management and care, they are made available to us and we can immediately not lag, as I say, behind the rest of the world, but implement it for our patient care. Yeah, the device had to come from somewhere. I mean, do, do we have them available now? We do have them. Okay. Um, this was an early access program, so we were privileged really to be the first, the first team to Hence the to gratitude. Yep, it was, it was just, it was very humbling to know that we were being able to be part of something in South Africa that was a first and in Africa as a whole and okay. very grateful for that opportunity and to help the patient, of course, as, as, of course. as, as yeah. is key. And, and the patient is doing well? The patient's doing fantastically well. That's no more great. passing out, no more, no more issues at all. Okay, what's next now for Dr. Levine? Any other big op on the way? Well, we try day to day. You never know what you're going to No, we don't get. want people falling over because of heart problems, of course. But, I mean, uh, if after this one, w what could be the lessons you're going to take forward? So I think that ensuring that you have a team around you who is skilled in doing what they do and to continue continuous education, continuous upskilling, continuous interaction, both locally and internationally. We work in more than just the pacemaker space, we work in the interventional space with stents and um, valves and various other uh, structural heart disease, uh, closing holes in the heart, etc. So there's a huge amount there, there's a huge amount of technology out there. And it's always about finding the appropriate technology and bringing it into our society and into our environment and using it cost effectively as well. So, so people can access it. Thank Sustainable. you very much. Yes, thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Nari Levin, Netke Mill Park Hospital, of course. He's a cardiologist. He and his colleagues have pulled off uh, Africa's first implant of this latest pacemaker device called Biotronic Envia Sky. It's the first time I've done an interview in the studio being very relaxed because if anything happened to me, I've got a cardiologist in studio. He'll help me. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, though, it's good, good news coming out of our healthcare system at this time.